Hi everyone! If you have ever wondered how to test your architecture that it is not broken after several months or years, so projects are referencing the projects which should not be referenced, classes are not sealed or any other rules that you can imagine, then I have a perfect solution for you if you work in the .NET world. It's called NetArc Test and it's a library created by Ben Morris. It's a fluid API based and it contains a lot of different rules that you can apply to any test framework that you wish. So you can do that in MS test, in X unit, in N unit or whatever else that you can imagine. So let me show you how to create such architecture tests inside your solution, how you can structure it, what kind of rules can you apply to it. But before we start, I would like to go with you quickly to the GitHub page of this library. So here you have a GitHub page for NetArc test library and a short description in README. However, this description is enough to already start with this library. So you can easily go here through the examples that are created and then you can start to code your own architecture tests inside solution. Before we go there, I would like to show you why this library was created because it's described here and it's as well described that it was based on the ArcUnit library for Java. So this is some kind of a library that is quite well known in the Java world and the author wanted to migrate it as well to .NET world. So here you can see that it's based on a Fluent API and it has these rules that you can as well integrate it with any unit test framework that you would like to and incorporate it into a build pipeline. So from the perspective of examples, you can see that first of all, you need to take the types that you are interested in. And then with a Fluent API, you can easily define what you are looking for. So here as an example, we have types that are in current domain. They should reside in the namespace of this one and they should not have any dependency on this thing. Then it gets a result and checks if it was successful. And then you can have, of course, some kind of assertion on your site that checks this result if it was true or not. So there are more things here. There is as well information that it's compatible with uh, .NET Framework 4.6.1 or better and .NET Core 2.0 or better. So today's example that I would like to show you and run with you uh, will be integrated into the .NET 7 solution. So this library works perfectly fine in .NET 7. And of course, there are a lot of different information here that you can go through. You can have some custom rules if you would like to create it and you can as well group the rules into policies. So this is something that might be useful for you if you would like to somehow structure your rules inside your test solution. If you would like to have a further reading, you can as well go into the blog of the author. So he describes here how it can work out and there is a bit more information on the library itself. That's it from the perspective of the library. So let's dive into the code, into the solution and try to find out what kind of tests we can create there. Before creating this video, I created already solution that we are not wasting time on it. And from that perspective, you can see that we have some kind of layers. We have the API, we have application, domain and infrastructure. Inside of each of these projects, I created some kind of a class. So here we have some kind of a domain member. We have as well the application member and so on. An example of what we would like to check here is that domain types do not reference application types. This could be the first test. What else we can check? We can check if all the public classes are sealed or not. So this is another thing. We can check as well if there are classes inside domain that reference system data namespace, so ADO.NET. If it is referencing it, then we would like as well to fail such a test because we don't want the reference to system data inside domain layer and so on. So you can as well mix 
different rules together. You can use the end operation and then you can have all this inside your test. Now when we have our solution, let's create an architecture test project. So I click new project and here we will name it as similar to the other project. So we have test your architecture. I have a typo here. So test your architecture dot architecture tests. It's targeting um, .NET 7 as mentioned before as other projects and we have it here. When we look inside, we have a class generated. I am dropping it, we don't need it. And before we start creating an architectural test, we have to reference several different NuGet packages. So if we go here, uh, I looked for net arc tests. So these are our rules, which we have to install. And let me edit here. Okay, we have net arc test rules installed. So our target library of today's video. And then of course we need two other things. First is the library for unit tests. I will use XUnit here for the video purposes. So let me install it. And the last one is to let us run the tests. So .NET test SDK. And we will install the stable version here. Okay, we have all the needed packages. What should we do now? Here it depends on what you want to test. We would like to test the domain that domain types do not reference application types. So if we look into the domain, we have a domain member. If we look into the application, we have application member. And we don't want a situation that domain member or any other type inside domain project would reference application member from the application. The first tests th that we will create are quite simple here. So we will add here a new class, which is called domain tests. Of course, when you create your own project, it might be better to split it already to several different classes because it all depends on how many tests you will have here from the architectural perspective. So if you have a lot of different tests, it makes sense to group them like with policies and so on and then create every file for the new set of different rules. If you have several different tests, you can start only with this four different classes here. So domain tests, application tests, infrastructure tests and the API tests and then you will cover the basic checks for it here. We have a class, so let's create a fact now from the X unit and a method which we will have. And let's say it should always pass. So I have a typo here. It should always pass when domain does not reference application. So. Here we are. And from that perspective, we need somehow to get the types from the domain and then operate it with a check against application. So before I write any more code, I would like to add reference to both projects. So to domain and to the application that we have the access to the types which are there. First point will be the arrange phase. You don't need to write such a comment. I like just to group my tests with arrange, act and assert because then it is more readable for me. So that's why I'm doing it, but you don't need to handle it this way. So now we want types and we want to use types from the net arc test library. And we want to just find all types which are in the assembly, which is called test your architecture dot uh, domain. So now we are sure that our types are loaded types that are inside the domain project. Next thing is we want to do some act. So we want some kind of a result. And this result will be based on the search in the types. We have a Fluent API here, so we want, we want to say that our types should not have dependency on. And now we want to say that we don't want to have any dependency on the test your architecture dot 
application. So now we are safe from that perspective and in the end we want to get a result from it. Now I would like to assert and I will use here the standard assertions from XUnit, however I prefer to use the Fluent assertions because they are more human readable, so that's why I prefer it, but here we will use to simplify things the assertion from XUnit, so I just want to see that it is here the true assertion for my result that it is successful. So if we have no types that have dependency on test your architecture application inside domain, then we should get a true result. So we should have here successful response. And if I now run our test, you will see that it pass. But let us do the opposite. So here, we will create some kind of a constructor and in this constructor we will reference the application member. To do that we need to reference the project, application project, and now you will see that we are using here test your architecture dot application and now our test should fail. So let's go back here and let's run it again. And you see here we have a failure because we are referencing inside domain member, the application member. Okay, so we have first test. Let's create now another test where we would like to check that when the class is public, it has always to be sealed. So let's create another fact public void should pass when all public classes are sealed. Here we have a test that should always pass when we have every single type inside domain which is public sealed. First of course a range phase and here we are having the same story as at the top. So we want to check for the assembly, which is a domain one. So test your architecture dot domain. Here we are. Now we want to act. And when we act here, we have a result that we are expecting. So inside types that we have, we want to say that all the types that are public should be sealed and we want to get a result. You can see how the Fluent API is comfortable to use. It's really readable by a user. So the same you can do with assertions. Assertions can be as well quite readable with the fluent assertions. Now, in the end, we want to say, check that with our assertion, our result is always true. Okay, let me run this test here. And we see the test failed. And the test failed because inside the domain member, we have a public class, but this class is not sealed. What we want here to do is to add a sealed. This is the only class that we have here inside the domain. We go back to domain tests. We run our tests again and voila, the test passed. You can have a lot of different combinations here. You can say that, for example, types that are public and you can combine it with and. So you can here say that that are public and are abstract, or that are public and are static, or nested, or mutable. So a lot of different combinations. This library gives you a huge power to always make sure that the types that are 
residing in one project are not referencing something that uh, the classes that are implementing such interface should not reference something else and so on. So there are a lot of different possibilities here. And of course, I will not go through all of it because it takes a lot of time, but I hope that it gave you some kind of impression how to handle it. And what are your thoughts about this architecture tests? Do you write them? Are you planning to implement them inside your solution? Did this presentation give you the overview of what can you achieve with the .NET Arc test library? If yes, I'm very happy. You can subscribe my channel to stay in touch with all the problems, architectural ones and software development ones. There will be a lot of interesting content coming in the next weeks. And I would like to thank you for watching today's episode and see you in the next one.